hello everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video we are delving an essential topic in fluid mechanics and hydraulic machinery that is topic is single column manometer these devices play a crucial role in understanding fluid pressures so join me as we explore the fascinating world of single column manometer and their applications in this informative video so before starting the video please subscribe to my channel single column manometer single column manometer is a modified from a youtube manometer in which a reservoir having a large cross sectional area say about 100 times as compared to the area of the tube is connected to one of the limbs of the manometer as shown in the figure due to large cross sectional area of the reservoir for any variation in pressure the change in the liquid level in the reservoir will be very small which may be neglected and hence the pressure is given by the height of the liquid in the other limb the other limb may be vertical or inclined so there are two types of single column manometer that is vertical single column manometer and inclined single column manometer let us see in detail manometer first let us see about the vertical single column manometer the figure shows the vertical single column manometer construction here it contains an vertical tube which is open to the atmosphere and left side of the manometer it will be having a large cross sectional area of the reservoir and it is connected to an pipe where we need to find the pressure so let x x be the datum line or reference line in the reservoir and in the right limb of the manometer when it is not connected to the pipe when the manometer is connected to the pipe due to high pressure at a the heavy liquid in the reservoir will be pushed downwards and will rise in the right limb when there is an act of pressure in the reservoir will act in the downward direction this pressure will push the heavy liquid towards downwards and this will cause the rise of the heavy liquid in right limb now let us see the terms let delta h be the fall of heavy liquid in reservoir when it is connected to a pipe the liquid in the reservoir will act and this pressure will push down the heavy liquid in reservoir h2 is the rise of heavy liquid in the right limb so the pressure which has been acted will cause the rise in right limb and h1 equals to height of center of pipe above x x and pa is the pressure where we measure and a is the cross sectional area of the reservoir and small a is the cross sectional area of the right limb s1 is the specific gravity of the liquid in left limb and s2 is the specific gravity of heavy liquid in the right limb rho1 is the density of liquid in pipeline rho1 is the density of the liquid in pipeline and rho2 is the density of heavy liquid in reservoir now let us derive the equation to calculate the pressure at a so the volume drop of heavy liquid in reservoir that is volume drop of heavy liquid in reservoir will be equals to volume of rise in the right limb the fall of heavy liquid in the reservoir will cause a rise of heavy liquid in the right limb which can be given by a into delta h equals to a into h2 that is capital a and small a so delta h is the change in that is pressure acted in the reservoir so which can be written as which can be written as 
delta h equals to a into h2 by capital A. Now consider the datum line y y as shown now. The pressure in the right limb above y y is given by rho 2 into z into delta h plus h2. Similarly in the left limb rho 1 into z into delta h plus h1 plus pressure. By equating these two equations that is equation A and equation B. So A equals to B that is by equating the pressures by hydrostatic law. We have this one. So now this can be written as Pa equals to rho 2 z delta h plus h2 minus rho 1 z into delta h plus h1. So this can be written as rho 2 g delta h plus rho 2 g h2 minus rho 1 z delta h plus rho 1 z h1. So now by taking the term that is delta h common term. So delta h into rho 2 z minus rho 1 z. So this equation will be obtained from this equation. So here replace the term delta h from this equation. So here delta h equals to a into h2 by a. So replace the equation, sorry, replace the value of delta h. Then we will get Pa equals to a into h2 divided by a into rho 2 z minus rho 1 z plus rho 2 h2 z minus rho 1 h1 z. As we know that the cross sectional area that is a by a as capital A is 100 times more which can be neglected. So neglected can be taken as zero value. So when you multiply this term with zero, we'll get Pa equals to H2 rho 2 z minus H1 rho 1 z. These two terms will be remained. So by using this equation, we can calculate the pressure at A. Pa equals to H2 rho 2 z minus H1 rho 1 z. Let us solve a simple problem. A single column manometer is connected to a pipe containing a liquid of specific gravity 0.9 as shown in the figure. Find the pressure in the pipe if the area of the reservoir is 100 times the area of the tube for the manometer reading as shown in the figure. The specific gravity of mercury is 13.6. Now let us see the solution. First find out the given data. Here a pipe containing a liquid of specific gravity 0 0.9. It means that S1 equals to 0 0.9. So from S1 we can find the density that is rho 1 equals to S1 into 1000. So which is 0 0.9 into 1000 where we will get 900 kg per meter cube. So here S1 equals to 0 0.9 and rho 1 equals to 900 kg per meter cube. Similarly, the specific gravity of the another liquid that is heavy liquid is 13.6 as mercury is 13.6. So S2 equals to 13.6. So rho 2 equals to 13.6 into 1000 kg per meter cube. Next, here H1 equals to 20 centimeters, which can be written as 0 0.2 meters. Similarly, H2 is 40. So H2 equals to 40 centimeters which can be written as 0 0.4 
meters so this is the given data so we can find the pressure at a by using the equation a by a into h2 into rho 2 z minus rho 1 z plus h2 rho 2 z minus h1 rho 1 z so remember all these terms s1 that is density of the liquid in the pipe density of the heavy liquid h1 h2 let us continue substitute all the values from the substitute all the values in the given equation number one then we'll get the this <clears throat> by doing some calculations so this can be written as like this and from this we'll get 52134 newton per meter square or it can be converted into centimeter square that is 5.21 newton per centimeter square so pa equals to pressure at a equals to 5.21 newton per meter square now let us see about the single column inclined manometer the figure shows the single column inclined manometer this manometer is more sensitive due to inclination the distance moved by the heavy liquid in the right limb will be more let l equals to length of the heavy liquid moved in the right limb from x x and theta is the inclination of the right limb with horizontal and h2 is the vertical rise of heavy liquid in the right limb from x x line so h2 can be rewritten as l into sin theta now substitute the h2 value in the equation of pa equals to rho sorry pa equals to h2 rho 2 z minus h1 rho 1 z substitute the value of h2 in the given equation so then we'll get pa equals to sin theta into rho 2 z minus h1 rho 1 z so by using this equation we can find the pressure at a in closing i am grateful for your support and feedback remember to subscribe for more content and let's make a positive impact together knowledge is power let's change the world until next time stay inspired and see you in the next video if you have any queries or questions regarding mechanical engineering please email us at drawing for engineers at the rate of gmail.com we'll respond with a video explanation thank you see you in the next video